purpose of my existence is to serve you with hot buttered scrummy toast. If you don't want any, then my existence is meaningless. Good. I toast. Therefore I am. Will you shut up? Lister has been reading cat books. You don't use marks, you use smells. You run your nose along the line and all the different smells are released. Meanwhile, a UFO has been spotted. You mean a rock? It might not be. They're always rocks. Mostly they're rocks, I agree, but maybe this one's different. This is also the season one episode that most features Talky Toaster. It's why are we here? Beats me. You want some toast? For better or for worse. So Cat, who has been bringing Lister these cat books, has now brought what is basically their version of the Bible. That's a cat thing! You see, sometimes in a book, we have a drawing of something that is happening in a story, and we call them pictures. And Lister basically finds out that he's Jesus of the cat people. No, that's me! I was sent to stasis. That's what frozen in time is. He did that to save Frankenstein. Look, Frankenstein was my pet cat. I am your god. There's an interesting thing to put on your resume. <laughs> if you're god, why that face? What's wrong with me face? What's wrong with your face? It's upside down and inside out. That's what's wrong with it. So Holly has brought in the UFO, which has turned out to be a pod, doing, which what sets off one of the best visual gags of the whole series. <laughs> Gross. All right, let's do a plant your way. After Rimmer leaves the room, it turns out to be a garbage pod. Why didn't you tell him? Well, it's a laugh, isn't it? <laughs> Rimmer believes that the pod was sent by super intelligent aliens. I mean, like the pyramids! How did they move such massive pieces of stone without the aid of modern technology? They had massive whips, Rimmer. Massive, massive whips. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, oh, what do you believe in then? Do you believe in God? God, certainly not. What a preposterous thought. I believe in aliens, Lister. Rimmer strongly believes in aliens. Aliens, Lister, who can give me a real body cast. Spoiler, none are ever going to show up on this series. Why? Because Rimmer wants it. The next morning... This is kind of the definitive Dave Lister scene for me. Give me breakfast. Uh, chicken vindaloo. And a milkshake. What flavor milkshake? Um, beer. Chicken vindaloo and a beer milkshake. For breakfast, no less. Yep, that's our Lister. So Holly has translated the Cat Bible, and Lister finds out that he is indeed Cloister, or the Cat God. And there we shall open a temple of food, wherein shall be sausages and savory donuts and all manner of bountiful things. Yea, even individual sachets of mustard. It sounds great until he learns that a holy war broke out over a disagreement about Lister's intentions, and a lot of them died. The ones who believe the hat should be red, and the ones who believe the hat should be blue. It's dark, really, isn't it? You're not kidding. They were supposed to be green. This is terrible. Holy wars, killing. They're just using religion as an excuse to be extremely crappy to each other. So what else is new? <laughs> and while Lister has some pretty obviously bad qualities, he's a decent guy overall, and the deaths of all these people who, for some reason, looked up to him, understandably weighs pretty heavily on him. I'm talking about the suffering. People died, I mean, cats that cat people died. I could have been God, you know, given a different start in life, given the lucky showbiz break you had. And Rimmer spectacularly misses the point. Way to go. I just wish I could meet them and explain and apologize. Well, that would look spectacular, wouldn't it, Lister? God returns in all his splendor and says, sorry, it's all been a total cock-up. But Rimmer has more important things going on. Look, I'm sick of hearing about these stupid cats! I believe the Quagars! Quagars? Quagars! It's a name I made up. Double A, actually. <laughs> I believe the Quagars have the technology to give me a new body. Lister goes looking for the cat. Come on, kitty, kitty. I love how he calls him. I could really go into some of the nuances of this whole owner-pet dynamic and how weird it is on the surface, but I'll save that for the cat videos. Anyway, it turns out that there's another cat on board after all. An old, dying, blind priest. Burn the sacred hat. I like how he has one dark hand, like how some cats have one black paw. Burn it, it's the symbol of the lies. As it turns out, he is having a crisis of faith and no longer believes in cloister. EXIST! Is it truly him? Does, does he look like a king? A king? Yeah, yeah! I love the image of Lister threatening to decapitate the cat with a giant golden sausage. Then it truly is him. A fail. Oh no, you didn't fail, old man. Lister, of course, feels responsible for the fate of the cat people, so he does his best to make it up to at least one of them. You mean there's a place for me on Fushal? A place? 
This scene actually gets to me a bit. Visually, it's ridiculous, but what is going on here is really deep. The happiest day of my life. <laughs> Later, the garbage pot is opened and... Incredible. The perfectly preserved remains of a Quagar warrior. Really, Rimmer? <laughs> Wait for it. It's a garbage pot. And again. It's a smegging garbage pot. <laughs> and so ends Waiting for God. This was an episode where I was kind of surprised to learn that the creators don't like how it turned out. And apparently a lot of the fans don't so much either. I guess I can kind of get it. This is the closest thing we've gotten so far to a cat episode, and he's hardly in it. Or at least he's not in it much more than previous episodes. Plus Danny John Jules, the actor who plays the cat, feels that the cat is a big character and the episode just didn't live up to what a cat episode could have been. And if I turn a really critical eye towards this scene, it is kind of weird. It's like it's too dramatic and heavy to be funny, but it's too silly and weird to be drama. It causes this weird reaction where you don't know how you're really supposed to take it. But I still like the scene. Despite its weirdness, I do find it moving, and I think it's pretty heartwarming that Lister comforts the priest during his final hour like this. It paints him as quite the noble character, despite his faults. Also being something of a cat fangirl and a cat lover in general, I like learning more about his race, even if he isn't featured in the episode as much as maybe he should have been. Going back to the garbage pod subplot, I also get a huge kick out of Rimmer's hypocrisy during this episode. He scoffs at God, but firmly believes in aliens. Which I wouldn't necessarily disagree with, except that his beliefs regarding these aliens are so specific, and he believes in it so strongly, that it pretty much becomes a religion, the exact thing he's mocking. This is one of those episodes that is surprisingly deep and thought-provoking, and it reminds me of why I love this show. Even Talky Toaster has a few profound things to say. I don't think it's bashing religion or even religious people in general so much as taking kind of a satirical look at how some people handle religion and how you don't have to be religious to treat something as a religion. Either way, this is probably not something you'd see on American TV, at least on a sitcom. Next up is Confidence and Paranoia. See you then. <laughs> you keep your underpants on coat hangers, don't you? <laughs> That's private! Okay, Rimmer, okay.